Welcome back to These Things Are Written. We continue our reading in John 21, beginning with verse 9. When they, the disciples, got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. Now, and although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. John brings some interesting details into this passage, especially the first part of it. Um, when they got to the shore, the disciples found a fire already burning, charcoal already burning. They, they saw bread and fish already on that fire. Now, that might not seem like too amazing of a thing, but they didn't mention where the fire came from or seeing it before. It's one of those ways that Jesus was providing for them, giving them that meal and showing also that he would continue to provide for them through this whole ordeal and what would continue to happen to them. The second, and this is my favorite detail in all of John's gospel that's mentioned, is it says that they caught 153 large fish. Now, that importance of the number 153 is one of those things that people have been trying to figure out. What is so important? And, and a lot of people have come up with great theories. Well, actually, not so great. They've come up with a lot of different ideas. One of the most prevalent was that this was the number of fish uh, and it, it, it represented the whole amount of the t different kinds of people that would come through the gospel. But yet we know that there are much many more than 153 fish. It ties back, some say, to a prophecy in Ezekiel talking about the water flowing from En Gedi, from the desert, but yet even that has problems and difficulties in showing that it is the fulfillment. So what's the reason? What's the reason for 153? We don't know. If John meant for some symbolism in this, he hit it a little bit too well. My personal belief is simply this, that it was a lot of fish that it was the unofficial world record for the number of fish caught at one time in one drop of the net. That was, at that time, an amazing catch. And John is reporting the number of fish because it was so amazing. Next important detail is that the net didn't break. In other Gospels, uh, in Luke, when there was a great catch of fish, there was so many that the net began to break. And if you remember that when, not in John, but again in other Gospels, when Peter and James and John were called, what were they doing? They were mending their nets. Their nets often broke, and it was a way that, that they would spend their days after fishing all night, mending the nets, hopefully making sure that they wouldn't break. These nets, even though it was a great catch of fish, the largest number of fish caught, they did not break. Important details showing, really, Jesus serving his disciples one more time. And then there was the invitation. Come and eat breakfast with me. You can tell that the disciples are in awe, and they are almost in unbelief. We might consider why they were in such unbelief. They saw him twice already. Why not the third time? But yet, it, the question that they asked, you know, that they didn't want to ask is, is it you? Is almost more probably better understood is, is it really you, Jesus? Almost in disbelief of what was happening. 
This was the third time. The third time that Jesus appeared to them. And we'll get more into the number three next time, but I think it connects to our reading, actually not next week, tomorrow, as we look at uh, Jesus and his talk with Peter. But today I want to end reminding you of the focus of what Jesus was doing. Once more, as he is appearing to his disciples, not just showing that he was there, but he was, was serving them providing for them a meal one more time, showing them that he was caring for them throughout this. A reminder for us at all times is to follow Christ's example of serving others with joy, with laughter, all for Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, just as you served the disciples on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the calling as well to serve those around us with joy and with love that comes from you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace now and serve the Lord. Amen.